how many of you would have struggled to transfer your domain from one provider to another so don't worry sit back because this provides it thing is we are going to connect with godaddy support second we are going to transfer request the transfer in aws with the information that godaddy has provided us then we are going to have the post transfer settings in aws row 53 additional check and settings once we have done the transfer and then the final confirmation and test to ensure that everything is working properly so let's dive in and get started the first thing we are going to do is connect with godaddy support that is we're going to sign into the aws account unlock the domain through godaddy's interface provide the account number received from it godaddy support Wait two to three days for changes to propagate. The GoDaddy page where you would have seen, and this is the information. So whenever you have a product purchase from GoDaddy, you could come here and you would be able to see the details in my products. Now here, if I go in, I don't see any domain out here because the reason being is I have already transferred out my domain from GoDaddy, but my, my I, account is still active because I have I had paid for the one year billing. But you could kind of come here, manage all, and this is where you will be able to see a domain out here. and this is where you can you'll be able to do a few things such as release the lock because you don't have to have a lock whenever you're transferring a domain if it is in a box state then AWS will not be able to transfer the domain as well as your auto renew is not needed anymore and then what you will have to do also is you will have to go to help center and initiate a chat with godaddy and this is the godaddy help center that uh, we could go with and initiate the chat like if you go here domain and the chat button will pop up you could initiate chat with them because this is where something that the support representative is going to provide you a few things choose technical support then when you choose this there's an option going to be for pass string a domain and this is where they provide you domain now we out here and transfer domain so they're going to ask you a few questions So what is the company name which are currently registered you provide the information and follow along with them and this is where at the end you, you may have to be transferred to an agent or you could successively ask to be transferred to an agent because you would need the account number that will will be required as part of the AWS setup as well as uh, do tell them to have the lock could be released to an not insured and auto renew as well as turned off so once you have the information let's go on to the next step the next step is going to be request transfer in AWS where and you will initiate the domain transfer request on route 53 AWS is going to verify the domain status and initiate the transfer on your behalf and you would have to wait for uh, some duration for the for the transfer to complete and the transfer process officially can take anywhere between 2 to 5 days now here we have route 53 for those of you would have uh, are aware so route 53 is the AWS uh, domain information for similar to godaddy where one can come and check the domain information as well as put in a request to transfer domain and uh, do the domain record setup out here so this is the interface that aws provides you could come out here you could search in whenever you log into aws you could search for route 53 come in here and this is where you would be able to let's come in for the whenever you have to transfer uh, transfer in a domain click on this domain registered domains put on the request for you could transfer in single domain multiple domain and click here and tick in my case it's single domain if you have multiple domains feel free to choose this option but you click single domain you give the domain that you are transferring hit the check button it's going to provide you the information whether it's transferable or not because if the lock status is on it will not be able to provide and a few other information it will be checking to ensure that you can truly transfer a domain now once this is green lighted let's go to the next step because assuming that you are able to transfer the domain so now we go here and you would have to put in a new request for transfer because once you do this you will be getting a request status which you could go in over here and check the status now this is where you see that i had already put in the request for the operation id and this is where we would be able to uh, see the information out here to be able to transfer the domain now in this case you could always f- reach out to godaddy as well to check the status and you could always have the chat open when you're putting in the request when they have the information godaddy support has been very helpful they do ch- check uh, your uh, you are truly who you are before transferring the domain because it's all for your safety only so it could seem that they are asking the keys multiple time 
But again, rest assured, it's for your safety. You wouldn't want them to do anything less but transferring your domain out. So once, once you have the chat, you could keep the chat open and put in the parallel request with AWS. Now, this is where you, you see that there are 14 steps that AWS will need to do to transfer the domain. And these are all for documented as part of AWS documentation. If you want, the link is provided for the documentation as the thumbnail. So feel free to click on that. But once this is done, you would see that the domain transfer is complete. So which is where you would have to wait for uh, around two to five days. In my case, it was done in, in 24 to 48 hours, which was less than two days. But a lot of times it could go beyond five days. So hang tight, rest assured, if there's no issue. And if any issues, you could always reach out to AWS or try to try to check with them on that part as well. So this is the process of transferring the domain. Now, once the domain is transferred, you have received an email, you come into AWS console route 53 and see that everything is a green check mark. So now we'll have to ensure that the hosted record that we have and the, the namespaces that we have are matching. That is, so we check the transfer status on AWS Route 3. It is all green status. AWS will notify us upon the successful domain transfer. We'll have to update the name servers in Route 53 and verify and configure auto renew and the transfer log settings. So something, let's walk into all those steps now. So coming back to our screen, now when we see, see here, registered domains, this is where you will see that the domain is transferred successfully. In my case, it was uh, a company domain. You will see it transferred. You should have auto renew on because come the last day of the, the renewal time, if you don't have this on and God forbid something you transfer, you don't transfer somebody else could take your domain and all the brand you have built, all the customer information you have built, it could all be gone in a, in a way. So the, please have this auto renew always on. Transfer lock also should be on because again, if the transfer log is not on, some some mysterious person could try to steal your domain from you. So which is where it is good to always have this transfer domain on. And this is where we could go to the hosted zone. Now the next step is to check our domain status. And that is where you could click on the hosted zone. You would see the, the name service record out there. I wouldn't, uh, I'll just try to mask the information out for you. So this is the name, so I'll like similar, you could see it out here. This is the name service record that you could see. Now, if I click on the link, I will see detailed information out here, which is the name server record. Now, the reason I have kind of hidden it is because just to ensure that the records are not copied, but you could uh, check the out here, you will see these name server records and MX records as well as A records. Now these name server records, they have to match with the ones that you th that you show, see, saw earlier. In my case, it didn't match and that is where I had to struggle to ensure that, okay, why is the domain not transfer not working? Because if I had to route my traffic to my website, it wasn't working properly. So that is where you would want to ensure this, this process is done. Now, once this is done, you could always map your do uh, domain to your website and you could see the tra traffic working pro properly. So with this said, let's go on to the next uh, step. Now, these are the additional checks and settings that one could do because if say, because most of the times people, when they have a domain, they also would have an email configured, which is where you would need to up confirm and update your MX records. You would need to check and update additional settings if required. And any transition or any, any other configuration one will need to do, you can do here. So let's get into it, which is where this is the MX record, the information that one will need to provide. And in my case, we had moved out from Outlook, which was used in GoDaddy, to another provider such as Zoho, some, which is a comparison I'll create for another video. But now we use uh, Zoho in our organization and that provides, uh, provides us the, the value for the MX records. So what we had to do is we had to take those values that Zoho provides, put it over here, and uh, so that Zoho can validate those domains for, for our domains for us. And uh, once validated, the emails should start flowing in properly. These are a few additional namespace records that one will need to enter based upon uh, the information provider. Like TXT is another record that is required for the email domain. And every every mail provider will have additional information that uh, well could be required to provide. And likewise, when you host a website, there'll be additional information for, uh, right? Like the auto discovery, your uh, CDN, if you have that you will need to map out here. So there are a bunch of records that one will need to provide. But the benefit of, having in AWS is you, compared to GoDaddy, is you have all the control to manage your own information compared to reaching out to support and trying to uh, to connect with them multiple times to do uh, things out here. So that is one of the features out of using AWS. And uh, so 
pretty much uh, this is what will be there and once you have done the email server your domain you should be good to go and you would be able to see your website as well as the email flowing and you could if required you just double check this check the settings to ensure no issues if any one of you have any issues in transferring your domain from godaddy to aws or for hosting your website feel free to reach us the at the uh, page below the link below or give us a call so that we could kind of help you out in transferring your domain and hosting your domain in in cloud cloud we use is aws google and azure thanks again please feel free to like comment share this video and uh, let us know about your experience in transferring your domain and how we can help you in terms of resolving any issues you have thank you and see you for the next tech